around the world and here at home, bringing relief, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. You're listening to the Mize Missions Podcast with Terry Mize. Hello, everybody. God bless you and welcome today to Wednesday's podcast for Terry Mize Ministries. We are so delighted you have joined us today, and uh, we've got some awesome things we feel like the Lord wants to remind us all of, minister to you with comfort. Uh, sometimes the word even corrects, <laughs> but it always points us in the right direction. You know, the word of God raises the standard. It's like a soldier out in the battle and the standard bearer always is the one saying, hey, over here, this is where the focus is. And certainly that's the ministry of an apostle. So we want to share that with you today and uh, minister to you. Always remember, you can find us at Terry Mize Ministries. Um, dot org. That's the full website. But then you can get to us at just real easy terrymize.com. And we're always there to share with you, pray for you. I even brought along on this trip a stack of prayer requests and, and uh, uh, letters and things from people. And we're just so delighted to hear from you and know that God is ministering to you. And we are here to share the what we can with you. You know, God gives to everybody a measure and gives us a, a a portion of what he wants done. So we want to always freely give that to you and bless you with it. So, darling, here we are uh, in out, out here sitting on this island in the South Pacific, and it is one beautiful place. The fact that God called people here, raised people up, and there's churches here in this part of the world, what a blessing. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, I've always loved New Zealand and, and loved the people here and have ministered here since the <clears throat> since the early 80s. So it, I've been here for decades. And uh, we've watched this, uh, the islands, uh, I don't know, modernize, I guess you'd say, uh, whenever we used to travel this nation a lot. You know, there weren't any major hotels here. There were just a small tourist courts. And, and my kids still talk about the, the little little motels, the little tourist right, courts, and right, every one right. of them had a trampoline, so they enjoyed doing the trampoline <laughs> thing, and uh, and we've traveled both islands, but right, you know, right. as somebody asked me this week, they said, well, has, has New Zealand changed any over the many years you've been coming here? And I said, well, you know, it seems pretty much the same, except, right. of course, obviously, there's more modern things and, right. and technology, and just like anywhere else in the world, and I said, but I think probably the biggest thing to me is in all the years I used to travel these roads and drive right. these roads here... Uh, there were just quaint little towns, and, and the only restaurant in town might be a little fish and chips shop or a little cafe restaurant. And now, Renee, almost every town we go through, we've got McDonald's and <clears throat> excuse right. me, Burger King, yes, yes, Wendy's, yes. and Carl's <laughs> Jr., and Subway, and Kentucky right. Fried Chicken, or KFC. So, uh, you know, I guess America's here. Well, and I, I agree totally with you from what I hear when we were having lunch with some of your wonderful longtime friends uh, the other day. Uh, they were saying that really uh, New Zealand's not much different than it was 15, 20 years ago other than the restaurants and the shopping. Right. And they said New Zealanders are just still, they're just still living in this wonderful atmosphere down here uh, in the, on this island. Sure. And it's just a wonderful sort of pristine place you were saying that when you were here what like 30 years ago or back in the 80s that they had said there was there had been one murder in the whole nation oh yeah one year i was here and, and there had been a murder in the nation and i tell you everybody was so upset that what's new zealand coming to what's happening to new zealand <laughs> one. there was a murder this year there was a homicide in the, in the nation of three million people and uh, they couldn't figure out how it was going downhill and all going to the trash heap I know, and I find and it. I was sitting there thinking, well, Chicago, <laughs> Miami, Houston, Houston, Los Angeles, yeah, New York, you know, uh, New York City, New Orleans, I mean, murders uh, every day, every day, every day, every day. Well, and they were they were just thought the place was going to hell in a handbasket right. because there'd been one murder. So there'd been one. It's a lovely, beautiful nation with a lovely, beautiful people, and I've always enjoyed ministering here. I have so many friends here, uh, friends from the Maori Nation, which is the indigenous tribe here, and friends uh, that are that are uh, uh, that are Anglos you know out of right, British descent right. and so uh, we're excited about being here well and then Sunday when you ministered at two Samoan churches God's given you such great favor with uh, the Samoan people 
and those services were just outstanding. Um, Terry preached messages that they felt like um, the pastor said were real. Uh, they needed personally, and then that was that would turn the focus of what the church needed to do. And it was so wonderful. Their worship was outstanding, but it was so wonderful, Terry, to see the favor and the hunger the favor you had with the people and then the hunger that was in their hearts. So there, there's the Maori, uh, certainly population here, yes. Anglo, and now there's what, um, there's more Samoans in New Zealand right. than there are in Samoa <coughs> right, living right, right. here. And to have favor to preach the gospel and to minister the word of God, I'm telling you, it just is overwhelming to go to places in the world and see people hungry for the things of God and then know that that's the only cause that counts. No, that's true. That's true. And you know, uh, this last Sunday I preached in a, in a little town called Ashburton. Right. And I've got some dear friends that live in Ashburton. That's right. That's and right. I've preached there before, but this was a brand new new work of, of the Samoans. It was a Samoan church and it was just packed out and they were excited. And of course, this next week we go to Samoa. Yes. We travel to Samoa and we'll be there ministering right. for a, for a whole right. week. And uh, right. we're excited about that. And then when we leave some more, we'll go to Vanuatu, which is another nation in the South Pacific, and we'll preach there for a week. And then we'll come back to New Zealand just for one day in service. I'll preach in Auckland, and then we'll head off back to the United States. Well, there's, there's a lot out here in the South Pacific. There's so many of these islands. I'll get the numbers for you. But um, th there are so many islands out here, Samoan Islands, Fiji Islands, Vanuatu, some of these others that have, you know, they have, I think there's 81 in one chain, and then there's 1,100 in another chain. And do you know that there are people, um, we've been told, living on those islands that nobody has gone to to preach the oh, gospel? Oh, sure, there's still in some there places are still unreached. untouched islands where people, and we found out um, through Patty that um, there's even, you know, cannibalism still going on and all of these different things that happen out in the South Pacific when people are secluded and then they are just left to themselves. <laughs> and, the, you know, Proverbs says that a child left to himself... <laughs> brings his mother to shame. You know, and it's the same way when a, when a whole family or a nation uh, are left to themselves. Uh, human nature does not ever go up, it goes down. Oh, that's right. And so we need to, even though things are good and things are simple, lifestyles are simple, there's no big city clamor and there's no competition <laughs> in high school about who's going to have the best car or the best clothes. But I'm telling you, the world needs Jesus. And it's so important for us to continue to stand on this and um, preach know, God, the gospel. God has a lot to say in the Bible about the islands. He's always been interested I in know, islands. And, know. you know, just in the Indonesian chain, which is, of course, in this neighborhood, although the neighborhood is thousands and thousands of miles right, apart. Right. But uh, uh, the Indonesian chain has 13,000 islands. Well, wow. Can you imagine 13,000 islands? And there's and people the on most The majority of them are right, inhabited, right. have people. And many of them unreached. Many of them are just still primitive tribes and, and cannibals and and headhunters and, and uh, uh, just living the way they've lived for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, and, of course, the Philippines. Uh, the right. Philippines has 7,000 islands. Can you imagine? That's amazing. That's, that's 20,000 islands just in two, two nations, the Philippines and Indonesia. And then there's all these islands in the Samoan chain and the Fiji, Fijian chain. Uh, Samoa has, uh, you know, we go to Western Samoa, to the nation of Samoa, but there's also a few hundred miles away uh, American Samoa, right. which is an American territory and has American military there, and and uh, and so uh, we've never been there. We've not gone to American Samoa, but we we go to the other Samoa, to the nation of Sam Samoa, right. and uh, so we're we're excited about always preaching the gospel and ministering the word of God. And there's just islands throughout the world, just island after island after island, and some of them haven't heard. So we're happy to tell them. No, that's right. And it's so important for us to be the light. You know, I, I always think of being, having been a pastor's wife for nearly four decades, I want to encourage all of you that are in the local church that are, you know, you've been salted into your cities. And uh, if you'll go into the prayer business and get yourself a globe and a, or a map, and uh, maybe several of them that can give you a real picture of the world to where as you pray every day and you pray in tongues 
and you see what the Spirit of God is saying, that just like where Terry and I are now, you can lay your hands on the islands of, of New Zealand and Samoa and Vanuatu, and you can pray for us and send the Word of God, like Psalm 107 says, and believe God that there will be great revival in this part of the world. Uh, I, I know God has sent numerous people in times past to different nations of the world just to go and stand in the streets and pray or to get up on a hillside and just pray or to go up to the tallest building and pray. I know when we were in Hong Kong, we were I was there with a, working with a, a church in Houston and then we were there with um, people that are leaders in, in the Hong Kong uh, charismatic Holy Ghost ministry and they were very successful prominent uh, working folks and um, they took us up on the tallest building there in Hong Kong where you could overlook the whole city and had a, an entire several hundred people prayer meeting that was just outstanding and, and it's amazing what happens when your eye gate begins to see where you're praying and the Holy Ghost can take over and begin to pray through you uh, what God will do. So go into the prayer business <laughs> and pray over these nations and pray over the peoples of the world and realize that missions really is the only cause that counts. And it's where God is why you and I are in the church and why we have a job and why we go to church, why we pay tithes, why we pray prayers, why we send missionaries, um, why we are partnering partnering with folks that are going into all the world. And that's still the job of the church uh, 24 7 52 weeks out of the year 365 days a year <laughs> we are um, you know as jeremiah said the word of the lord is as a fire shut up in my bones it's wonderful isn't it darling oh absolutely it's an exciting thing to, to preach the gospel and watch. you know I, I, the thing about preaching the gospel and watching it work is just yeah. is just such a powerful thing. You know, it is. the old apostle John, when he was in his nineties, wrote the book of Third John. Right. So he'd been around a long time. He'd seen it all. He'd been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Uh, they had tried to kill him, tried to boil him in oil, and he wouldn't die. He just said, "Oh, this is a nice oil bath." And so when that didn't work, then they exiled him to the Isle of Patmos, and told him he had to stay there, serve out his sentence. So while he was there, he wrote a little book called Revelation. And uh, John had seen it all, and he was an old uh, an, an old man by the time he wrote Third John, and uh, and yet he made the statement there. He said, "I have no greater joy." Right. I have no greater no joy greater. That's amazing. Than, than to hear that my children walk in the truth, and and when those guys, those guys of that caliber, the guys in the right. Bible, when they said the word truth, they were talking about the word of God. And he said, "He said I have no greater joy." than to hear that my children, in other words, his spiritual children as well as his natural children, but his, all those that he had preached to were walking in the truth, in the light of the Word of God. And, you know, um, I feel the same way as I travel all these years. It's my 51st year in ministry and, and travel the nations of the world and, and uh, go back to places I've been to before and the seed that I've planted before and watch how it's grown, how it's, how it's matured, how it's prospered, right. how it's expanded, how it's how the people are taking the word and running with it. And I, I just kind of sit back and smile and just say, I have no greater joy than to see that my children walk in the truth or walk in the word of God. Well, that's the thing <clears throat> is, is raising people up. What you were talking about the apostle John there, and it's just so, uh, I think incumbent upon the ministry all the time to be satisfied uh, with preaching the word of God and realizing, as Paul said, that when they get the word, they're our joy and our crown. We no, have right. no exactly greater right. joy. You know, and, and I've always felt like if I've done what, you know, and I saw uh, faces in the churches on Sunday and, and as we fellowship with friends and pastors throughout the week, I mean, we were just, while we were in, in Christchurch, we were just on 24-7 talking oh, to people and answering questions and ministering. Picking and your brain. Every, everything to, from marriage counseling. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, that's true. Ma marriage counseling to helping folks with family members to uh, wonderful families that are doing uh, ministry with foster children. I mean, we were just on all the time talking to all of these folks. Absolutely. And, it's, and it's no, there is no greater joy to a believer to know that you have delivered by the Holy Ghost the word of the Lord 
to comfort, to encourage, to instruct, um, I think to motivate people, and then to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In America, we're in a fight just to have Christianity have the freedom that it needs to preach the gospel. And here around the world, we're in a fight to maintain the preaching of the gospel and to have inroads in favor with people that are preaching the gospel, no, to absolutely. encourage them. Paul said, you know, he did he did several missionary trips where he said to encourage the churches. Sure. To just be around them and they, and to encourage them. Well, it's such them. a shot in the arm for the churches to hear well, from really the apostle. Or, it really or is. somebody that's been a, a father to them or speak into their lives <laughs> then to go right, back and right. speak. I know how I've, I've always felt about my spiritual fathers, even though most of them are in heaven today. But, right. but boy, when I get to get around them and have a cup of coffee with them or a meal or a visit or just hear them preach, you know. And just be in the service with them and watch them minister right. the word of God. It just, it just did something to me as a child of theirs, right. and I know what it does to also to the father. No, that's because right. Because we, I've been both. I've been a child of great fathers in the faith, and then I've been a father to those that consider me right. uh, their father in the faith. So, but you know, John, back to John the Apostle John in Third John, he made that powerful statement that I don't think the church has still ever understood over the years. But he made that powerful statement, which really was the whole purpose of him writing uh, the letter that we call Third John. I mean, John, no telling how many letters he actually wrote to the church. Right. Uh, he could have written hundreds or certainly no, that's dozens true. That's true. to all those missions churches. But but three of them, the Holy Ghost thought should be in the Bible. That's amazing. Three of it's them, startling. the Holy Spirit said, you know what? These three my, letters my, my. need to be in the Bible. And we yes, call them First John, Second John, and Third John. And so John in Third John uh, started out to write. He took pen in hand, uh, and it's only it's only for thirteen verses long, uh, but or excuse me, fourteen verses long. But eight of them really is the reason he took pen in hand. Verse one to verse eight. So if you'd go study verse one right. to verse eight, you'd really see why John That's picked so up powerful. the pen, picked up the quill, picked up the feather yeah. pen, dipped it in ink, and began to write. And then the other verses, verses nine through fourteen, simply are are just a letter to the church. Right. And he's talking to that particular church, not to the church as a whole, but to that particular church that he was going to come see them, mm-hmm. and that there was a bad guy in the church named That's Diotrephes. Right. Yes. And he said, when I when I get there, he said, I'll yank the slack out of him. Or right. actually, he said, I'll I'll remember him when I get there. Uh, but I bet he yanked the slack out of him, that old apostle. <laughs> and then he said, there's a good guy in church named uh, Demetrius. Right. And so he talked about a bad guy named Diotrephes, a good guy named Demetrius. Uh, and then he really didn't say anything else to the church as a whole that would reach down to, to our generation, except except just in verse 11, where he said, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, and he that has, doeth evil has not seen God. And he goes well, right back into talking about a good guy then. He had right, talked about right, the bad guy, right. now the good guy. And then he says, Well, I had many things to say, but I'll wait till I see you face to face. You know, love big brother John. Greet the friends by, you know, right, the whole, right, right. <laughs> greet, greet the friends by name. Right. Uh, and sal- salute you, and, um, uh, you, you know, love your big brother John. But verse 8, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 1 through verse 8, is really why he took pen in hand that the Holy Ghost had something to say to the church down for the next 2,000 years. And he started off and said, I'm, I'm writing to the, to the church, um, uh, I'm writing to, to Gaius, excuse me, who was an elder in the church. He said, whom I love in the truth. And, of course, again, the truth means the Word of God. He's the talking Word about of God, the Word. The gospel. And so he, excuse me, I've dropped my Bible over here. <laughs> but um, but he said, I, I'm writing to Gaius, whom I love in the truth. And then he goes on to the very next verse, which we all know and the church is all familiar with, but I think she's misunderstood it forever. And he said, Beloved, that means he's talking to Christians. He's not talking to sinners. He's He's talking talking to Christians. He says, Beloved, I wish, or I pray, wish isn't a Bible word. It's the actual word there is pray. I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Now listen to what this old man, 90 plus years old, is saying. He's saying, above all things, above all things, above A-double-L, all things, longest word in the Bible, all, above everything else in my 90 years, here's what I want. Now you know, that's a, that's a powerful statement, Renee. That's right. <laughs> when a guy of that caliber, a guy that's, uh, that's running around with Jesus, one of the original disciples, a man they tried to kill and couldn't, a man that's now in his 90s, a man that's been in the ministry all his life, says, exactly. now above everything else, here's what I want. Well, that gets my attention. 
That's right. That perks my ears up. And I say, well, wait a minute, John's talking. John's yes. saying there's only yeah. one thing. Let me hear That's what that right. one thing is. And he said, that is that you would prosper and that you would be in health even as your soul prospers. Then he goes on and says, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came, talking about Christians, the brothers, mm-hmm. the brethren, came and testified of the truth or the word that's in you, even as you walk in the truth or in the word. I'm in Third John, if y'all want to follow along. I have no greater joy, verse 4, than to hear that my children walk in truth. That's then, wonderful. Then verse 5 is a powerful verse. You that's ought to right. put bells and whistles and stars and underlines or whatever you do in your Bible. He said, Beloved, again, he's talking to Christians, he calls them Beloved. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever you do to the brethren, talking about Christians, whatsoever you do for the Christians, and to strangers. So he's talking about sinners. Whatever you do to the brethren, the Christians, and whatever you do to the strangers, the sinners, then you do faithfully. That's a faithful work. That's right. Which have borne witness or have testified of your love, your charity before the church. Whom if you bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, you shall do well. Verse 7, because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles. Now verse 8 is the other reason for this letter. He had two reasons for this letter. Uh, our, our, well, actually he had one reason. That was do you prosper and be healthy. But then he tells you why in two places, verse 5 and verse 8. Verse 8, he says, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth, or we might help get the truth out or get the word out. So in verse 5, he tells you the reason he wants you to prosper and be healthy is that so you can do faithfully, do good to the brethren, to the Christians, and to the strangers, to the sinners. And then in verse 8, he says, and we need to be fellow helpers to the truth. So you need to prosper, and you need to be healthy so that you can do good to the brethren, That's to right. the strangers, and so that you can do uh, be a fellow helper or a helper of getting the word out or getting the truth That's out. That's right. That's one of the most powerful chapters in the Bible. <laughs> well, it and is. And God it's so put simple. it, the Holy Ghost yeah. put it at the very end of the Bible. That's so it's the almost bottom like, line. It's almost like God saying, now, above all that, above everything else from Genesis to Revelation, I'm telling you that I want you to prosper and I want you to be in, be health. in health. But it's not just to get rich quick scheme. It's not no, just right, so you right, can have right. the, uh, join the, cat, the charismatic cult of Cadillacs, condominiums, and cruisers. It's not just so you can get another car, another house, another diamond ring, even though there's nothing wrong with <laughs> those things. And then be distracted by the care. But that's not the purpose. Taking care of it all. Because you get distracted by the care of it all. Really? And he says, I want you to prosper so that we can get the truth, the truth out, out, so we can get the word out. So if you start a radio station, a television station, you get the word out, that's going to cost you money and no, health. That's if right. you print tracks, that's going to cost you money and health. Right. If, you, if you take those tracks and pass them out, that's going to cost you money and health. Uh, if you preach on the street, if you preach in the church, if you if, whatever you do to get the gospel that's out, right. to do good to the brethren and good to the stranger, and whatever you do to get the truth out, it's going to cost you health and it's going to cost you money. And John knows that. John's saying, look, I've been doing this for 90 years. I know what it's going to cost you. If Jesus said, get the gospel to the world, Great Commission, go ye into all the world and preach That's the gospel right. to That's every right. creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you cast out devils. Yeah. Speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink any day of thing that won't hurt you. And you shall lay hands on the sick and in then. the name of Jesus, and they <laughs> shall recover. The original Hallelujah. language says, hands they shall lay, and he heal they, they shall be. be. So he gave us the great commission, Jesus did, five times. That's Matthew, right. Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, five times. He gave the church the great commission, which I've always called the only commission. Because right. he didn't give the church three or four or five commissions, so you do this, and you do this, and you do this. No, no. no. He gave us all the same commission, get the gospel to to the, the world. world. Preach the gospel to the world. Rescue right. perishing souls so they won't go to a devil's hell. And John knew that. John knew that now if you're going to do that, that's the commission. That's the command. Right. That's the job. And if you're going to do that, it's going to cost you two things. It's going to cost you money. Money. And it's going to cost you health. You must have money and you, you must, must have health. health. People that are listening right. to us today, Renee, many of them are our partners. Many of them no, partner right. with us every bless month. You, they, bless you. they pray for us uh, uh, in the spirit world, and then they send money to us in the natural world. That's and right. they're our partners, and so they help us get the truth out, the gospel out around the world. They're fellow helpers to the truth. 
Isn't that wonderful? What a great They're literal partners of this. They've sent us here to New to Zealand. I when we leave here, they're sending us to Samoa, then they're sending us to Vanuatu, they're sending us back to New Zealand. That's right. Later in the year they're sending us to a nation that I'm not giving the name of right now, just for safety's sake for the people, but sending us to a nation where they cut your head off to say Jesus is Lord. We'll have That's we'll right. rush in there, have an open air crusade, have tens of thousands of people at 10. They're looking at fifty to 70,000 people show That's up. Right. Uh, and, and we're going to have blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped, uh, cripples walk, yeah. devils cast out, people saved, saved, saved. Thank God they'll be saved uh, for eternity and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, Hallelujah. it's going to cost us a lot of money. It's going to cost That's me right. and you health and money to do that. And to get that done, we need partners who also have health and money. And so together, <laughs> right. we're partners together. Wow. And John knew all of that. And he said, look, if you're going to do that, if you're going to go over there and preach to those people, if you're going to bring the gospel to those people, if you're going to be a, tr- a helper to get the truth out, you need to be prosperous. My desire for you as an old apostle is that you be prosperous. And my desire for you is that you be healthy so that you can do good to the brethren, good to the stranger, and Get the word out around no, the world. Be right. a fellow helper to the truth. Isn't that powerful? That is so powerful. That's and the reason I, I for Third that. John. That's the whole point. That's right. It's the whole point, and it makes it so simple. I heard you exhort a church about that over last month, and it was just outstanding. And I, I wish and grieve over the fact, and regret deeply, I should say that that people have complicated through the years the real purpose of the church. Oh, absolutely. I, w- I was reading this morning in First John one verse 29 where it says the next day john saw jesus coming to him and said look not, this isn't first john this is the book no, of john. this is the book of john i'm sorry john, john chapter one, one. Say it again now. and john saw jesus coming to him and said look exclamation point there is the lamb of god who takes away the sin yes, of the world yes, yes. and if there is a lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world then we're going to need to go to the world and tell them about the sacrifice that's already been made for their sins yes. and that they don't have to go to a devil's hell um, and share in Satan's demise, but that they can be delivered and live in eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. In the meantime, have a book and a family and a fellowship and a, the Spirit of God living in them that will help them be a success in life and have that health and their needs met in every area that you were just talking about there in First John. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that takes away the sin of the world and replaces it with the promises of God. Amen, amen. And Thank gives God. you eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. Well, you know, we're back to what you've always said, missions is what? Is the, <laughs> it's the only cause that counts. It's the only cause that counts. It's the heartbeat of Jesus. It's That's the number right. one job of the church. It's the, it's the supreme task of the church of Jesus Christ is to go share the word and lift people out of sin, rescue them from eternal hell, and set them on the pathway to heaven. No, that's right. That's exactly why we we do what we do, why pastors are faithful. It's the reason the church exists. Church members are are faithful to come. It's a whole reason for, like Ephesians chapter 4, you know, that God gave gifts unto men, that that it was for the benefit and the building up of the body of Christ, so that... We can go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes. And we do it by prayer, by our offerings, by our uh, attendance, the goers, the senders working together to get this great gospel around the world. You know, in contrast to so many other, uh, all other religions of the world that are, you know, so combative, they're exclusive in their little world. They, they're they always prejudicial, <laughs> you know. If you just think about how religion is versus the relationship of, of a believer with the Lord Jesus Christ, as Hebrews says, it's a better gospel, it's a better message, it's a better sacrifice. Hebrews is the better book. Yeah, Hebrews is all about being better. Being better. That God always has a better way and that he's always got wonderful things to share with people. So missions... Uh, is the only cause that counts. That's really what we're all after. We go to church, we build buildings, we uh, send kids to youth camp, we have children's church, we do uh, women's retreats, men's retreats, we do all these things, but it's to keep the church focused on going to the world. No, absolutely. That is the only cause that counts. That is the only cause that counts. The church exists for missions like a fire exists for burning. I mean, there is no other purpose. Otherwise, we just become a bless me club. No, that's right. Just a little church here and a little church there and a little church across the street and down the road. And we're just a little bless me club. And 
and we're just all little birds that go into the box every week and then the the pastor comes along and shakes the bird seed a little gives it a little shake and right. the, all the little birdies get a little seed and go home happy but nothing's accomplished no that's right there's there got to be, be a reason the there's got to be a purpose why are that's we right. gathered together well that's what a, that when, when i heard brother Osteen preach that i guess now about 35 years ago uh, ephesians chapter 4 I'd gone through three years of Bible school and knew we were in missions, raised in a missions church. But it, the whole purpose for Christianity, the local church pastors, uh, the ministry gifts, uh, all of the teaching and training that is done so that we may do the work. So we may do the work. The That's work, right. and it uses that, you know, some sometimes an unattractive word to people, the work of the ministry, the work of God. Yeah, work is a four-letter word. Some Christians think it's a dirty <laughs> word, you know. But most of God's words, I don't know if you realize this, but most of God's words are four-letter words. That's right. You know, pray. That's right. Obey. That's right. Hear. Hear. Give. Love. Fast. <laughs> Love, yeah, you know, I mean, God has all these all these four letter words that He wants us to go do, and the church just kind of cringes. Oh, those are four letter words; those are dirty words. Yeah, we either overemphasize some and deify them, or we reject them totally. So. But I was talking a while ago about our partners, and I was talking yes. about how it cost them uh, money and prayer to be a partner with us, uh, and it cost us money and health. That's right, and prayer to go do what we do. And when we go into this nation that I'm not talking about at the moment, but it's going to cost us uh, some some serious money. I mean, serious yeah, money right. to get over there and get that job done and get that many people together and, and train pastors, preach to pastors, and get in and get out. Uh, it's going to cost us some money and some health and some prayer. And uh, and the devil would like it to cost us our lives. We're not going to we're not going to pay that for it. We're not going to pay in blood and, and with our lives. Although many have over the over the centuries, my, my, my. Uh, but That's then right. just the other, you know, we're going to be on six continents this year. We're going to be on Asia, we're ministering in Asia. We're going to be ministering in in North America, South America, Australia, uh, the Oceania, which is where we are now, uh, and then and then Europe and in Africa. Yeah. And so we're looking at six continents, and all of those right. are going to cost us. Uh, uh, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore, but we're believing God for for all <laughs> long the life and good all health. for long That's life right. and good health that He satisfies right. us with long life with long life That's He satisfies right. us, and not just long life but strong, healthy life. And uh, but yet, it's going to cost us health to be there, uh, right. and it's going to cost us uh, it's going to cost us money. And then thank God for our partners. You know, we're believing God uh, for two thousand partners. That's not very many, just for two thousand right. partners. Uh, just to send twenty five dollars every month. And there's people listening to us today. You know, it could be a couple thousand uh, listeners just right at this very moment. Right. But but at twenty five dollars a month, two thousand people would send twenty five dollars every month, faithfully, faithfully. You can even do it by credit card, where where our our office could hit the credit card on the first of the month, and we'd have we'd have that money coming in uh, every month. Right. And then we're believing God for two hundred people, just two hundred. At a hundred dollars a month, the two hundred <laughs> people mom. isn't that something? Yeah, two hundred people that that uh, would listen to us and believe God with us and believe in what we do and hear from heaven. They would send a hundred dollars a month every month, faithfully, 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 just like we partner with preachers, uh, the other ministers, faithfully. And they were believing God for uh, just twenty five, Renee, just twenty five churches, pastors. Right. I've got hundreds of pastor friends, but I'm believing for twenty five of them to hear from God. And say, you know what? We're going to support Terry and Renee a thousand dollars a month. Right. See, that's not a big deal. A church can raise a thousand dollars a month. If you have a hundred people in your church, and, and, and if each one of them just gave ten dollars a month, that'd be a thousand. Isn't that amazing? That'd well, be a, if the they crusades. just gave if they just gave ten dollars a month, a hundred people would be a thousand dollars. And so, twenty five churches sending a thousand dollars a month would just be a, a tremendous, well, it would be $25,000. And so the first of every month, we could we could say, pow, we've got $25,000 to go do this crusade with. But anyway, we're believing for partners. And That's my right. point is, my point is, and we have partners that have been faithful for years and years. I've got partners well, that started right. partnering with me back in the 70s and still are today. But uh, we've got, we, we, we pray for these partners. We pray for them every day. We believe for them. But it's going to cost them money. 
and, and prayer to get That's involved right. with us. So we pray for them, that they have money, that they have health, that they have their families blessed, that they have you, uh, they have the Hallelujah. strength and the anointing and the uh, the blessings of God and good deals and good solid business and blessed and, and, and debt forgiveness and, and, and refunds right. unexpected and, and unexpected sources. blessings coming. We pray for that for <laughs> That's them right. That's uh, right. all the time. But us and them together, together, Renee, we can do good to the brethren. Verse 5. That's right. Good to the strangers. That's right. When we go around the world, what it, what we do to help Christians, it costs us money. What we do for sinners, it costs money. So they they're they're fellow helpers with us to do good That's to the such brethren, a wonderful phrase. to do good to the stranger, and to get the word out. Verse eight: We're fellow helpers to get the truth out, to get the word out. That's right. Isn't that marvelous? Well, it's just thank wonderful. God, thank God, thank God. It's just wonderful, and that's really you know missions the only cause that counts, and we're here to do it and available and like terry was saying you know if we had that terry's got more invitations to go places than he can go and each one of them costs a great deal of money and it's not just you know all going out there and and uh, doing something uh, you know that uh, would be beneficial to somebody but it's really changing nations and what we're believing god for is to be able to change nations i was looking at this scripture i've always loved oh you who bring good tidings to zion uh, get up to the high mountain oh you who bring good tidings to jerusalem lift up your voice with strength lift it up be not afraid say to the cities of judah behold your god yes. and that's what we want to do raise the standard that says hey over here behold your, behold god. your god this is why it takes there's only money. one god there's no yeah. god like jehovah <laughs> that's right it takes money it says lift up your voice with strength it takes strength to do that, it takes strength to get on. How many airplanes are we getting on this one this trip? This trip, we're on 12 airplanes. 12 airplanes. <laughs> so, and that's because we decided to rent a car and drive to several of these places here in New Zealand, or we'd be on more planes. We'd be on more planes. <laughs> so I just want to tell you all how valuable you are in the end time for the kingdom of God. Every one of you, we, your prayers are count. Your tithing counts. Your giving counts. Your sh just you showing up counts with the anointing and power of God on the inside of you. So we just want to help you know that and see that and recognize that you are valuable in the work of God and nobody can do it by themselves. We share in all of this no, that we absolutely. do together. Well, God bless you. We're going to go. And uh, we're here in the city of uh, Queenstown right now. And um, we're going to go out and get some lunch and then uh, come back. We've got to do some a little bit of work here, but we're going to be able to get some things done today. And then we head on into another uh, place where we're going back into Wellington. And Terry will be preaching again Sunday. Absolutely. And we're so excited about it all. See, look for my newsletter. If you're on our mailing right. list, I wrote my newsletter yesterday, and so it'll be going out uh, from Tulsa here in the next uh, day or two. And uh, look for it. If you're on It'll our mailing list, and you'll get it. Uh, yeah. You'll get it in my snail mail. If you'd like to be on our mailing list, and please let us know. Contact my office. Go to terrymines.com. Let them know, or just call the office at nine one eight three nine two nine nine three zero. You can talk to Michael or Hannah at nine one eight three nine two nine nine three zero. And they also, uh, within the next twenty four hours or so, will have the. The newsletter on online if you'd rather just read it online but i talk a lot about the history of new zealand and, and our part here and how establishing churches decades ago and uh my wife jackie and i and four kids travel this whole nation and and uh just for decades we've preached the gospel here and so uh, anyway look for that newsletter both online or in your mailbox and uh, we're excited about uh, you uh, partnering with us and praying for us and helping us and and uh, listening to us, and uh, we, we trust that we're a help to you and a blessing to you in every way. Amen. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Be sure and tell people they can find us at terrymines.com. All of the podcast, former podcasts are archived there for you. And we love you and confess over you every day that you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. See you next week. Bye-bye. You've been listening to a Mize Missions podcast. For all the latest updates to our global projects, speaking engagements, and social media, visit us at terrymize.com. You can partner with us to give living bread to dying men around the world. Get involved at terrymize.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us.
This has been a presentation of Terry Mize Ministries.